I've made a lot of videos on this channel about top marching band fails, but today we are going to talk about the worst marching band of all time. It's making life musical, hey. The Leland Stanford Junior University Marching Band, also known as the world's largest rock and roll band. The band was formed in 1893 and began to make headlines when they had this interesting arrangement of the Star Spangled Banner where half of it was played by the trumpet in the beginning it was just a sole trumpet and then the woodwinds and the tubas come in real softly and then in the last verse it's the entire brass who break out and finish it off and it's an impressive piece. After making such a strong statement they liked the way it felt, they liked the recognition and they decided decided that they didn't want to stop making a statement. I've actually talked about this band before on a previous uh, Marching Band Fail video, and to me they have one of the best fails of all time. And he's just trucking through the football, through the band players. But unfortunately, the band isn't in the news for those kind of reasons most of the time. They are in the news and recognized for the crazy shows and all the antics that they pull off. So I have a big list of all of their offenses, and if you go on their wiki page, there's like a little bit about their history, but the most of it is just them messing up the entire time. For example, in 1970, the band dropped their pants during a nationally televised halftime show. They just took their pants off. I, I, they were wearing underwear or, you know, gym shorts or whatever underneath, but I couldn't imagine taking my pants off on TV. They were banned from Disneyland for several reasons. One being they took a microphone from one of the boat rides and started making announcements. But the reason that I mainly wanted to point out is they had plans to ride golf carts with beer kegs on the back instead of marching and then pass out beer to the crowd. So of course Disneyland was like, well, we're not, I'm, you can't do that. In 1986, the band spelled out no balls and formed a male genitalia and had an anagram show where they spelled out an anagram with the letters N-C-U-T and I'll let you fill in the blank there and figure out what word that is. But the next time they marched, they wore angel halos to pretend like, you know, they were perfect and they did nothing wrong. In 1991, the band's band director came dressed as an Orthodox Jew with a menorah and that's how he was dressed during pregame. But during halftime, he was dressed as a nun and led the band with a cross. And you can understand why at a Notre Dame game, they they're not gonna like that. It's very much kind of making fun of them. So one of the fans charged the field and ripped off the costume and it was not a pretty sight. The fan actually told them that they were gonna go to hell and it was a big controversial thing. And obviously they tried to say, no, we weren't making fun of it, but they were definitely making fun of them. In 1994, 19 members of the band missed rehearsal in order to play at the courthouse that OJ Simpson's trial was being played at and they played the zombies, She's Not There, which is really, really insensitive. And then in that same year when Stanford played the same team that OJ played for in college, they were driving around during the entire halftime performance in a white Bronco with blood spattered handprints all over it. Very insensitive and I, don't imagine why you would do that. In 2004, the band made fun of the Mormon religion at a Brigham Young University game by having band members wear wedding dresses and then the band's drum major got down on one knee to propose, all while the announcer was quoted saying, the sacred bond that exists between a man and a woman and a woman and a woman so it's, it was very insensitive and obviously that crowd, the Brigham Young crowd, didn't like it and they got booed. In 2016, this is one of their more famous moments. They were playing the University of Iowa and the band made fun of them by playing the jingle from FarmersOnly.com all while forming corn mazes and farmers and cow tipping and all kinds of things. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, and these last few things are very political, and I'm not going to state any of my political beliefs or anything like that, but they are very strongly stating theirs. Uh, in 2016, they sent a cease and desist to President Trump for using their theme song, All Right Now, when he announced that Mike Pence was going to be on his ticket for vice president. One of the more popular excerpts from the cease and desist was, our concern, Don, we're calling you Don, hope that's cool, is that your divisive rhetoric will tarnish the spirit of that song and all that it stands for. We can certainly admire a good lampooning of the political system, something you've definitely accomplished, but even we can recognize when a joke has gone too far. And believe us, we know a thing or two about taking a joke too far. So that's just the first example of them maybe not liking Donald Trump too much. In 2018, the band wrote a show live with help from their Twitter followers asking them questions about what they should play and how they should march. But the Sanford drum major was dressed in a Space Force suit, which made one of Trump's campaign managers tweet about how great it was. And obviously he didn't understand who he was talking to or else he would have understood that he probably meant it as a joke. And if the Trump bashing wasn't enough, they made fun of him and Texas all in one pass during one of their halftime shows. Our second alternative fact of the night, Texas is really, really small. Just how small is it? Well, assuming the earth is flat, you can only fit it inside Texas seven and a half times. And if you try to build a 50 foot wall along the entire southern border, the cost of it could only pay for the tuition of about 20 million college students. Yike. So there's a lot missing from this band. The scatter band nature of it takes away most of the difficulty of marching, if you ask me. The difficulty of the marching band is preparing music, obviously, but at the same time you have to play well and march, and this band doesn't do that. They set and then they play, and then they run to their next set, and then they play, and that is their show. But at the same time, it's a student-run band, and that means there's not really an authority above them that tells them, yeah, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this kind of thing, and instead they just do it. And having plenty of experience in a college marching band, particularly with a bunch of tuba players, I couldn't imagine if that was a regular thing where the band was just like, yeah, do whatever you want. They've been punished plenty, Disney doesn't like them, their school bans them and the NCAA bans them all the time, but they still are a thing that happens and it's a big part of the marching band universe. Today's shout out is Tyler Poe. He said, this is really the quality content I look for on YouTube. Thank you, Tyler, for saying nice things. If you want to be in the next video, shout out, comment down below, and I might pick you. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I wanted to take a second and update you guys on my life, because I know it's been a while. I know I haven't edited and filmed a video in a while, and you know, I didn't even edit this video. I now have an editor who edited this for me, and obviously, so thankful for that. But the reason why I haven't been uploading the past couple weeks, past couple months, is that I've been in hardcore audition mode. I have had college auditions so far, and I've done all four of them, and the only thing that's left is a band internship over Skype with the band director at one of the schools I'm going to. Uh, and I don't want to give away too much because I'm going to have a whole other video about that, but I did want to, you know, come in and say a little bit. So honestly, some of my auditions have gone well and some have have not gone as well and I feel better about some situations and it's just one of those things where it's like when I go into the audition I've been surprisingly not nervous which has been so awesome I'm thankful that maybe I'm beginning to get past that in my playing where nerves are messing up my playing and everything I just you know there's some stuff where I just don't know what's gonna happen, you know? And that's part of the, the trouble. Right now I'm just waiting for a yes and then everything else will be easier because I will have at least one yes, one place to go to at the end of the year. But aside from all that, I know that my goal coming into this new year, I know I didn't make one of those New Year's resolutions videos that I have done in the past. My goal in the new year is to upload more and I really think that this new editing situation will help me because it's hard for me to sit down and edit, but it's really 
nice for me to sit down and make a video and then just send it out and then oh, a couple days later I have one. I have a video ready to post and share with you guys. So I don't know, it, it, there's a lot of stuff in motion here. I've got a new logo, all kinds of cool stuff that I'm hoping you guys enjoy but I do hope that you comment down below and let me know what you think. If you want to see more from me? What kind of stuff do you want to see? Feel free to comment and let me know. But I think that's going to wrap up this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. It's a lot about marching band, but I know you guys like that, so we'll keep it coming. Speaking of, I also have big plans for drum corps this year. I know I've said in the past that I'm not a big drum corps fan, but this year, I think I might be trying to get into drum corps, so bear with me on that. But that wraps up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Go make life musical, and I'll see you in the next one. It's making life musical.